in central Belize, around six miles south of the country's capital of Belma Pond, rests Springfield, a small Mennonite community nestled between Maya ruins and lush jungles. Some Mennonite orders are similar to the Amish in that they're religious communities that live simply and without modern conveniences. In the 1950s, some conservative Mennonites that had been living in Mexico moved to Belize. In 2006, the village's peaceful existence was shattered by an unexpected event. A man fell down a hole into a previously undiscovered subterranean cave, seriously injuring himself. He was unable to get out. Late one night, a man runs into a village screaming. He's looking for help for his injured friend. The villagers quickly form a rescue team and head to the cave where they can see the man screaming in pain some 30 feet down. The group lowers one brave farmer by rope into the pit. He finds the man covered in blood and short a few teeth that had been knocked out in the fall. This man's teeth weren't the only teeth on the floor of this cave. They were surrounded by skulls and other human bones. What is this place? Archaeologists called to investigate the cave are shocked by the volume of the remains. Cataloging their finds, they recover over 10,000 bones and bone fragments. Locals dub the cave the Mitnacht Schrecknis Hale, which is Plautich, the Dutch-German dialect spoken by Mennonites. The literal translation of the phrase is Midnight Terror Cave, which seems like a pretty accurate name for it. The cave is about 60 feet below ground and totals about 800 feet long. It comprises eight unique areas, some that are open and wide enough for many people, and other small dark caverns that are difficult to reach. It's incredibly humid, and parts of the cave likely flood with water seasonally. Most of the bones are found in two distinct areas of the cave. Many are disarticulated, separated at the joints, and they've been cemented to the cave floor by the constant drip of seeping water. And there are beautiful pottery shards along portions of the cave floor. Many can be dated back to as early as the 9th century. Perhaps this cave had been a home used for generations who eventually perished here. We tend to use these naturally formed caves for shelter in extreme circumstances, but we don't tend to see people living in these for extended periods of time. It's basically 100% humidity. An environment like this is not very hospitable. Everything rots, clothes, food, everything. So it's unlikely that anyone lived here. Whoever these people were, they were here for a different purpose. In the 20th century, Mesoamerican caves that contained human remains were thought to be ossuaries, cremation sites, or ancestral tribute grounds. Could this macabre cave be a necropolis? Caves were powerful places for the Maya and were thought to be sacred spaces between worlds. They'd go there to communicate with their gods, so it would make sense that a cave like this could be a burial ground. Looking at the cave in more detail, researchers noticed something interesting. What appeared to be constructed paths of light clay that were traversing this cave system. It looked like they had been packed down by people walking these same paths for centuries. Researchers discover evidence that the cave has been architecturally modified. Two large open spaces that resemble plazas and two areas surrounded by terraces appear to have been leveled into the rock. Some of these large, flat terraces could easily accommodate several hundred people, perhaps spectators observing some type of ritual action, like funerary rites. At the top of a slope in one of the chambers is a small platform that appears to be some kind of altar. This is where presumably a priest could have performed final rites for a funeral. The Maya dealt with their dead reverently. 
So if this were a ceremonial burial site, you'd expect to find funerary tributes or markers, but there don't appear to be any. Also, it's odd that the bones in this cave are mixed together with no effort to maintain the integrity of each body. This can't be a necropolis. Given the volume of bones, putting them together into a complete skeleton is an arduous process. But the researchers managed to assemble over a hundred distinct remains, and there are likely hundreds more. Carbon dating the bones, most of them appear to be from what's known as the classic period of the Maya, which ran from about 250 CE to 925 CE. Given the droughts of this era and the fact that this cave had an underground stream, perhaps this area had more of an important spiritual significance. Could this have been a site for human sacrifice? The Maya have a well-documented history of ritual killings. Scenes depicted on objects like murals, codices, and ceramics feature males fighting, getting captured, and being sacrificed. When associated with caves, these sacrifices were often believed to be for one specific god, Chalk, the Maya god of rain. Perhaps this cave is filled with the bones of captured fighters, intended as offerings to appease Chalk and to bring rain. But many of the bones were not the size of a full-grown man. And in fact, many belonged to women. They were female. At the beginning of the 20th century, the cenote at Chichen Itza in Mexico was dredged and a huge amount of human remains were discovered. They were found to be the bones of both male and female, young and old. At the Midnight Terror Cave, among the remains that are believed to be female, there appear to be two main age clusters, one of middle-aged women and one of younger women. Now, the age distribution really fits this archetype of the female goddess, think the matron, the virgin. And it's supported by accounts of Maya rituals where a deity impersonator is sacrificed. Perhaps a ritual mythical drama was going on here with women playing the role of deities and then being sacrificed up to the gods. The gender of many of the remains isn't the only unusual discovery at the cave. An evaluation of the bones and teeth reveals that 43% of them were children. Because the Maya believed in an afterlife, they sometimes viewed being sacrificed as an honor, not a punishment. It's certainly not the first time the remains of children have been found at a Maya sacrificial site. Young children were seen as pure, so they were seen as more pleasing of a sacrifice to the gods, especially Chalk, the rain god. Perhaps children who were sacrificed might be able to help him end this drought. Researchers perform radiogenic strontium isotope analysis of the teeth to learn who these children were and where they came from. Tooth enamel, the hardest, most durable part of the human body, is formed when we are young. By evaluating it, researchers can provide a snapshot of nutrients consumed during a person's formative years. Teeth can tell the story of what we ate growing up. And by knowing an individual's diet, we can determine where they were raised. Basically, it's not just that you are what you eat. You're also where you ate it. An analysis of the tooth enamel actually found that about a quarter of the children came from about 200 miles away. Why would these kids be brought from so far away? Now, it's totally possible that this is simply a case of politics. Think about it. Sacrificing your children, the children of your neighbors, the children in your community, that might not go over too well. Historical records show that in some cases, non-biological children who may have been purchased, captured, or gifted were raised in affluent Maya households 
and then offered to other wealthy families, presumably for sacrifice. Some experts believe the remains of these children could be evidence of early human trafficking. There may have been a pipeline of sacrificial subjects from different regions, where young people were exchanged as commodities. If experts could prove that the Maya were moving and trading people and children for the purposes of ritual sacrifice, then that would be a groundbreaking shift in our understanding of Maya life and culture. For now, experts can only theorize about what actually happened to these children. But the full context and motivations of ancient peoples may never fully be understood through a modern lens.